let's begin with the, the definition first. To me, capitalism is a system in which production for profit dominates the organization of the economy. Does economics explain capitalism? Yes, I think there are economists, political economists that have explained capitalism very well and continue to explain it very well. Uh, does mainstream economics explain capitalism? Well, no, because it takes it for granted as the obvious architecture. It's like it's, mainstream economics is within that gilded cage uh, and it's gilded for the economists of, of capitalism in which it's taking all of those assumptions as laws written in stone, that production must inevitably be for profit, that individuals operate only in terms of increasing their material self-interest and so on and so forth. All of the assumptions of method methodological individualism, the assumptions of the profit motive determining all activity and that you will require always a material incentive to do anything I think these are extremely limiting for mainstream economics. And they're one of the reasons why mainstream economics is not so good at explaining capitalism. Whereas a larger branch and many economic theorists have been very good at explaining capitalism and explaining why that system creates certain results. To give you another example, uh, intellectual property, right? It's a relatively new concept. In fact, I find it hard to explain to my students who think that this is just one of those things that has always been there. The idea that you can have private property rights in intellectual property, that it can be something commodifiable, commercial, commercially used and held on to is a relatively new idea. Human invention, human innovation and human research predate that by many, many centuries. Uh, today, there is this notion that we are getting vaccines for a COVID-19 virus because we gave intellectual property to these companies. That's nonsense. We've had vaccines developed way back, right, for smallpox, to give you one small example, when people were not rewarded materially for developing that. We have had a huge range of human invention that preceded all these notions of assigning property rights commercial property rights to invention and innovation. Today's scientific inventions are building on huge, not just centuries of human knowledge, but on public research, which is not done with a profit motive. And yet there is this notion that, well, you know, this is the only way things work. And that's wrong. And it is not just destroying and creating unequal and giving wrong incentives and so on, but it's actually, foolish for humanity to confine itself into such a limiting uh, framework to organize economic life. It, the way economics and, and capitalism is structured, it also ignores or treats as externalities or as things you can ignore altogether, essential aspects, not just nature, but the care economy, for example, which operates fundamentally on altruism. It works because, well, of course, you have created gender division of labor whereby women do this and so on. But the care economy works because people care for the people whom they care about. And therefore, you can pass on a lot of the costs of care. You can have un unpaid care. You can have underpaid care. And all these capitalist market-oriented, profit-oriented economies benefit from that. Again, it's a very limiting way of organizing humanity, of organizing our economic life. And we're stuck in it because we accept those, you know, those, those uh, boundaries set by capitalism. But we don't have to, if we can think outside that box. And it doesn't mean that we have to, you know, have this big glorious socialist revolution and everything transforms, but we can start by querying some of those very, very obvious assumptions and say, we can actually organize our societies differently we can organize our economies differently, recognizing and rewarding and respecting care work much more, um, recognizing that innovation is a human urge and it doesn't always require you know, material profit. You don't have to keep giving huge money to corporations for doing something that humanity will tend to do anyway. There are many, many ways, I could give you many more examples, but there are many ways in which the idea that you know, capitalism is our essential economic framework 
is so wrong and misleading. And it doesn't have to only be posited to the complete utopia of socialism. It can be posited in many, many different ways in which you create a more porous boundary between capitalism and other economic systems. 